Good afternoon. Matt here from Surplus Trader Secrets coming live on Facebook. And welcome to another episode, episode four of a day in the life of a surplus inventory trader and a finder. And so what I normally do is I just basically, I'll just tell you what I've been up to. I tell you what it's like to, to, you know, to be trading each day, what I'm doing and the deals that I'm working on, the purpose inventory that I'm finding, um, you know, the contacts that I'm building and just things that I'm working on and just basically, you know, what, what a, an average day or week looks like um, for me as a full-time surplus inventory trader and professional finder of surplus inventory. And so obviously I'm buying and selling and I'm also finding inventory that I'm making finders fees from as well, guys. Um, so quite a bit to go through today. I'm going to show you some of the deals that I'm working on and I'm going to show you some of the samples that I've received from companies uh, that I've been looking at. Um, I'm going to tell you about, a, you know, one or two deals that didn't work out. And, you know, I, I like to give you, you know, the, the good bits and the bad bits. It's not all brilliant because, you know, it's that's the reality of any type of business. It's not all, you know, we're not making money all the time. Things, you know, deals are not happening all the time. Sometimes deals just don't happen. Uh, and of course, they do happen. Um, so I'm going to show you, you know, the, the good and the bad. Um, and, you know, I'm going to tell you why specific deals didn't happen as well. Um, so, yeah, basically, we, we nearly did a, a, a great deal recently. And it was one of my students who found this inventory. And it was a large stock of some uh, beers, some bottles of beers and cans of beers. Um, it was a big stock. It was 77 pallets. Um, it was about 70,000 70, uh, units of beer. Um, but it was all out of date. It was all expired. Um, so although, although it's gone out of date, it's still a, a, a deal that can be done. There are buyers out there that will buy out of date beers, you know, expired beers, uh, plenty of them actually, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of buyers out there that will buy out of date beers. You know, there's a market for expired beers. Um, these beers were out of date. They, they went out of date, um, in June of this year. And so we actually, it was a box of 30, uh, it was a box of 20, sorry. It was a box of 20 different beers, all sort of British ales and beers, different ones. And, you know, I, I found a buyer for it and we made an offer on this stock and they accepted, they accepted the price. And I thought, great. There's going to be some money to be made here. Um, and it didn't happen in the end, unfortunately. Uh, we found out yesterday. And unfortunately, the owner, the brand owner, um, decided they didn't want to sell the, the product because it had their name on each label on the beers. And they wanted to basically protect their name. They, they didn't want out-of-date beers being sold out into the marketplace. And then maybe people who have bought them put a review online saying, oh, we bought some out-of-date beers, um, you know, from this company. Um, so they, they were basically worried about, you know, their, their name getting out there on some beers that were expired. Uh, which to them didn't look good on their company. And basically what they decided to do was they decided to um, not go ahead 
with the deal and they decided to, to destroy all the beer, all this beer that was expired. Um, so it was one of those nearly deals. It was one of them deals that nearly happened. It was agreed, um, you know, it was agreed verbally on the phone, but we didn't reach the point of getting an invoice and paying for that inventory. Um, so yeah, it was a, it was a, a big stock, 77 pallets of beers that were out of date, um, all expired. And, you know, I had a, I had a buyer lined up to take it all. Okay. I had a buyer that was going to take all of that. And, you know, my finder would have earned a thousand pounds from that. Obviously we had to buy it cheap and obviously because it was out of date, we weren't going to actually get much for it anyway. You're not going to get much for out of date beers. So we had to buy it cheap and sell it cheap. Um, but my finder would have made a thousand pounds, but unfortunately, and I, I'm gutted, I'm gutted for me. I'm gutted for my finder, uh, Gaz. Um, you know, it was, a, it was a good find. It was a great start and he's only been doing this a few weeks and we thought, yeah, there's going to be a deal here. Uh, and then the company decided, no, we want to protect our name. We want to protect our brand. We don't want out of date beers going out there with our name on. So they pulled the plug on the deal. And unfortunately the deal never happened, um, which was a shame. Um, so I'm going to show you, I think I might've shown you these last time, which were some Xmas Christmas lights, you know, um, about 24, 25,000 packs of Christmas lights. And I did a deal on these last Friday. Um, very easy. You know, like I say, if you're looking for Christmas related products, you, you're never going to go wrong. If you can buy at the right money. Um, and basically I bought these at 95% off the retail prices. Okay. 95% off the retail prices. Um, and they come with batteries as well, which is good. Um, so yeah. So for example, if, if one of these retails at four, nine, four pounds, 99, I paid 25 pence. Okay. Um, so I just gave one price all the way through. Well, no, it, the, there were a few different retail prices. Uh, but I, I sold them for one price all the way through uh, and it made a couple of thousand pounds. Great. A great, easy, uh, uncomplicated deal. My customer will collect them from a third party storage. So I'm not getting involved in the transport costs. It's about 21 pallets. So that saved me a lot of money. Um, 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 so I'm going to show you some other stuff that I've been offered. I think I might have shown you these recently, these glass jars. Good for gifts or something, to put a gift in. Um, I'm still working on these. Um, I think it might be a bit too late for Christmas now, though. But they might be all right for New Year, maybe for Easter or Mother's Day or something, to put a gift inside and sell them as a, you know, as a gift. Um, I've been offered some mad stuff. I've been offered these speakers. It's like for a, a bicycle. You hang it off your handlebar like that. And it's a Bluetooth speaker. So you can, uh, you know, you can listen to music off your phone through these. And it's a, I think it's a radio as well. Been offered a load of those. Uh, been offered some of these. These have never, never seen anything like this before. It's a crazy little thing. It's a little torch. Uh, oh, I can press it like that. It's a little torch, and it, it's a magnet. And basically, you you sort of put it like you sort of magnet it, magnet it to you. So you could go jogging like that with this torch light. Um, it's just a little torch light in a little box like that. Yeah, you just fit it to yourself. Um, <laughs> So I've been offered a load of those. Um, I'm going to try and do something with them. Um, several thousand of them. Uh, not turning off. Yeah. And what else? Yeah, I'm still working on these. Um, pocket toys, little gift, little kids toys. Um, 
at the moment the price has been too high which has been the the stumbling block to get this deal done um unfortunately although it's a one pound 99 to two pound 49 retail product um then i've been offered like really low prices because it's just it, it's something and nothing really it that these little pocket toys the problem with these things is they're just the the used once or twice by kids and then they're just thrown away or never used again um they've just got to be so cheap and you know i i want to be paying somewhere under 10 pence for these kind of things you know or t under 10 euro cents um but we can't get near to the price at the moment so you know we're still negotiating um the seller is still sitting on the stock so he hasn't been able to do anything with it himself which says a lot you know if a, if a company is still holding the stock after a few weeks um you know the the the, the start to realize they're not going to get the price that they achieve which leads me on to another thing about you know being a finder what you have to understand is that you know as a finder a lot of inventory that you find you are um you know you, you you're getting offered inventory and you know most of the time the price that the that the supplier wants is too high you know that it's always gonna the price is always most of the time the price is always going to start too high and so you know you, you're either going to it's either going to be a case of just making them an offer and they accept or they make an offer and they don't accept and then it's a case of you know ne start negotiating and you know working on them and trying to get the price down and down over a few weeks if you can um and that's why you know uh, you know a lot of deals don't work and you know the main reason why a deal doesn't work even if you find as a finder you find some inventory and you pass that deal to a buyer okay who were you know who will connect with with the seller that's offered you the goods and they'll negotiate a lot of the time you know the deal might not happen because simply the simply because of the price that is the one one main reason guys why you know deals won't happen and that is because of the price the price is too high um that doesn't mean to say that the deal might not happen in a few weeks or a few months time you know if the supplier is still holding on to that stock that's what you got to understand they might you know they might be emotionally attached to that stock they might not be motivated enough to sell that stock what you have to understand is you know someone who's got some surplus inventory that wants to sell that inventory okay someone a company that is sitting on some surplus inventory they they need to be very motivated to to want to sell that inventory okay when i say motivated i mean that they 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 want to make a deal happen okay and if they're motivated enough they will bring that price down to make that deal happen with the buyer okay if they're not motivated enough the, then they're going to keep sitting on that inventory in their warehouse and that inventory is going to be going nowhere okay so wh when i when i speak to suppliers i always say to them you know are you how motivated are you to get rid of that stock if you really want to get rid of that stock you know you need to be negotiable on the price you need to be coming down to a realistic price level to make the deal happen um and if they're not very negotiable that means they're not motivated enough to sell that inventory um which means that they're going to be sitting on that inventory for a lot longer and that inventory is going to be going down more in value so you know if they come back to me in a few months time i will be offering less you know than i was a few months earlier does that make sense um so you know that that's what i'm saying you know some of you guys who are finding inventory and bringing me deals you know the main reason why nothing is happening 
either I'm not getting any interest from my buyer contacts is because the price is very, very unrealistic. The price is too high. Okay. It need you know, we, we need to be putting inventory deals in front of my, these buyer contacts. Um, but the price levels need to be, you know, a lot more realistic. So, you know, sometimes it's either the price is too high, um, or maybe the quantity is small. And that, that is difficult when the quantity is too small. That's difficult to make a deal happen, okay? Um, or on the odd occasion, it just might be the product. It just might be the product that's just, you know, no one's interested. No one is interested in that product at that moment in time, okay? But like I say, the main reason is the price. The main reason is the price. And, you know, it's all about the supplier and how motivated are they to turn that stock into cash? How, motiv how, motiv how motivated are they to clear that inventory quickly, okay? Um, if, the, you know, if, if they're negotiable, great. But if, if they're not very negotiable, then at that moment in time, it's going to be very, very hard to make a deal happen. Um, so sometimes, you know, that specific person you're dealing with, you know, they might be motivated to get rid of that inventory quickly and be prepared to come down on price. Some people you deal with, they might not be motivated enough. Um, and they think that their price is a realistic price when in actual fact, it is not a realistic price. And, um, you know, they need to be thinking, right, look, I need to get rid of this stock. I need to come down on price to make that deal happen. And if they're not prepared to come down on price, sometimes right down on price, you know, you know, the, sometimes they need to be coming down way under half the price that they want to sell that stock. A lot of the time they do, you know, I can get offered stock and the price is just, it's too high and I need to be way, way, way under that price, you know, way under half that price. Um, you know, because a lot of suppliers, they, they think that they can at least get their cost back on that product, meaning the price they originally paid for it from the importer or from the manufacturer. Um, but they're never going to. They're not going to get their cost back. It just won't ever, ever happen. Um, what, they, what, what they need, a motivated seller always understands that they will be losing money on that inventory when they sell it. That's what a motivated seller understands. They, they, they accept the fact that they will be losing money on that inventory. Uh, and of course, there's a lot of sellers, they, they, they can't accept that they will be losing money on that inventory that they are selling. Uh, they think, oh, well, I'll get cost, I'll get my cost back at least. They're not going to get the cost back, not on surplus inventory. Uh, so moving on, um, just working on another deal on some t-shirts. Now, obviously, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's the wrong time of year for t-shirts. We're, we're out of the summer and into the winter. So it, this is a tricky one. Wow, that's a big one. That's massive. That's a huge T-shirt. What size is that? 2XL. All ah, right, okay. So, yeah, I've been offered some T-shirts. And another another one here. There's about 50,000 of these. Um, and obviously, I'm thinking, well, you know, these. It, there's only two designs, and I need to try and find a buyer for them. And I'm going to struggle to find a buyer for these in the UK unless they are really, really for nothing. Um, because who's buying T-shirts now? We're coming up to the winter. So I'm looking for someone overseas in Europe or further afield, you know, in hotter, warmer countries to make an offer on these. Um, I've been offered a load of these. Now, these, these are little what I call little bags of the, the light Lego. It's something like Lego. 
um, been offered thousands and thousands of them and I've been actually offered these from a company in Canada um, but the stock is in America guys and this is what I want to speak to you about just one second I'm just going to turn off my radiator because it's boiling hot so guys um, for you guys who are actually out there finding inventory um, the USA is a great, great place to go and find surplus inventory. If you can imagine, you know, America is the biggest, it's the biggest place in the world, uh, to, to, you know, to go and find inventory without a doubt. And, you know, it doesn't matter if you're in the UK or Europe or anywhere else. You know, USA, it, it, it's massive, and there's a lot of great buyers there as well for surplus inventory across every product category. It doesn't matter what kind of product you find, you know. So, you know, have a go. Try and pick one or two product categories in the USA and have a look, you know, look, try and find some companies, maybe manufacturers or importers or distributors, um, and do the usual thing, you know, email them and see what inventory you can find. And, you know, the, the, I've got a lot of buyer contacts in the USA and Canada as well. And so, you know, it's worth, don't, you don't have to just stick with your own country or Europe, you know, try, try the USA and, you know, you, you, you might, you might have a bit of luck. Um, you might have a few results finding some surplus inventory in the USA, you know. Um, there's some good opportunities. As I say, there's some good buyers in the USA. Um, always looking for all sorts of product categories. Um, so, you know, I'm all, I, I wish I had time to do more of that, find inventory in the USA. I'm trying to get more and more involved. Um, but... The, the, there's there's a great there's a there's a there's a great opportunity there, and it don't like I say as a finder, you can be anywhere in the world, and you can email companies in the USA, um, and look for surplus inventory, and see see what you can find, um, and you know the the there's some good opportunities there, and deals can be done in the USA even while you're sitting here in the UK or Europe or wherever. Um, there's money to be made. Um, okay, guys. So um, what else have I found? Um, another great product category that I like a lot is, this is a bicycle lock. A bicycle lock, and it bends as well. It's a bendy one. It's a bendy one. So... Uh, the, the cycling industry is massive and it's growing and growing and growing. Um, so again, you know, every country has, you know, a big, a big cycling market. There's a lot of cycling importers, distributors of all different types of products, not just bikes, but all the accessories that you get with bikes. Um, so see what you can find in cycle products, you know, any type of cycle product or cycle clothing, cycle accessory. Uh, another great industry I highly recommend, guys. And finally, now this one is a bit different. <laughs> I've been offered a box, and obviously I've, I've gone into this before, you know, the packaging industry. And so... This company produces boxes um, for, you know, the footwear industry. And this is a, this is a, a, a shoe, a shoe box. And it was actually made for a big retailer in the UK called Next. So I've been offered like thousands and thousands and thousands of, of literally cardboard shoe boxes. Now you're probably thinking, well, you know, what are you going to do with those? Well, you know, there's people in the footwear industry who might, you know, they, they might buy stock 
where they could put the the shoes into boxes. They they or they might know people in the industry that needs some shoe boxes. You know, there's there's a buyer out there for everything. Do you think there's not a buyer out there for shoe boxes? So you know, I've only got the samples today, but you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this out to my basically uh, foot, footwear contact contacts. So anyone I deal with who who is in the footwear industry or looking for surplus inventory of footwear, I can say to them, look, I've been offered these shoe boxes. Are you interested, or do you know anyone that is interested, that or might be interested in uh, in some shoe boxes? You know, cardboard shoe boxes. Surely, there's people out there that need shoe boxes for something. Well, obviously for shoes. Um, but um, yeah, so I'm I'm going to see what happens with this. I, I'm I want to try and get a result with these. So I will keep you updated. If I if I can find a buyer for these, I will be delighted. Um, so what else have I done this week? I've I've actually done some. Um, I've had a VA do some email addresses for me on um, on uh, a few different lists. I've I've done a a, a big gift trade show list. So they've built me email addresses from the exhibitors from that trade show. Um, what else? Um, some auto parts companies, um, some flooring companies. Um, what else? Some other gift pro, gift com, gift type companies. Um, so yeah, so I I've been gathering some brand new email contacts that I'm going to be emailing this week. See what offers I can get. See what surplus inventory offers I can get, guys. You know, so that's what I'm doing all the time. And that's what I'm teaching as well. Like I say, everything I teach you guys, I'm doing myself. So when I say to you guys that you've got to be consistent each week, building your, you know, contacts, building lists of email addresses and getting these companies emailed. That is what I'm doing myself each week, guys. Um, you know, I'm, and I'm doing it consistently every week as well. Um, so that is about it for today. And, and um, yeah, that is it for today. I'm going to be back very shortly with some new uh, content and maybe some more training on a few new things, new ideas that I've got. Um, but yeah, I hope just go back and watch this and have a look at the type of products that I'm being offered myself. Okay. And obviously, you know, listen to what I'm talking about regarding the inventory that you find and the prices that the suppliers want for inventory. Okay. A lot of the time, the price levels are, can be high on inventory that you find. And obviously, like I'm saying, the, the seller of the surplus inventory, they've got to be motivated. They've got to be motivated if they want to sell that inventory. When I say motivated, I'm, I mean they've got to be motivated into, you know, selling that inventory. And, you know, if they're motivated enough, they will come down on price quickly because they want to get a deal done, okay? Okay. Uh, and some companies won't. They'll do the opposite. They'll say, no, that's our best price. Or we're a little bit negotiable. Yeah, we'll come down a little bit. But, you know, a little bit just isn't enough a lot of the time. So, you know, when you guys are bringing me surplus inventory deals, a lot of the time the deals won't work because they, they're just the price levels are just too high. OK, the price levels are not realistic. And that just makes, you know, when I'm putting those offers in front of my buyers, they're just not interested. They're, they, they think, you know, the price is just not realistic, you know. Um, so, yeah. How are you doing, Russ? Nice to see you, my friend. Russ is a fellow UK colleague. And um, I've got high hopes for Russ. And I'm hoping to try and get some deals done for us before Christmas and getting some money made. 
come on let's do this guys so obviously like i always do at the end i'm always going to make an offer to you guys uh obviously that you guys that are not already in my coaching program and um, obviously you know if you want to get your foot into this business my friends and you know start making some money then you know get into my entry level coaching program where i teach you exactly how to go and find surplus inventory like a pro i show you lots of different methods and systems that you can put in place to find surplus inventory consistently okay and then i'm here to help you try and do a deal on that inventory that you and what i'm saying is i will put your surplus inventory deals you find in front of my huge network of buyer contacts and you know see if we can make a deal happen and get you some finders fees earned okay so as i say you know it's it's an affordable coaching program it's a 97 dollar coaching program plus you get a load of bonus trainings on top a few thousand pound dollars of bonus trainings i'm going to leave a link uh, in the comments and above the video um so if you want to get into my coaching and start learning how to be a professional finder either on the side of your existing job or something that you want to plug into the side of your business if you've got your own business that's great this is li literally a plug and play type of opportunity learn exactly what i teach you implement what i teach you and then take action on what i teach you guys and you will start seeing some results if you if you literally learn what i teach and take action you will get some results guys so i will leave it for that and i will see you very soon have a great rest of the week any questions you've got send me a message or put a question in the comments and i will reply back to them later see you soon